All right, so today I want to talk about horizontal and frictional forces in your tone arm, uh, how to measure them, what to do about them, why we would want to know about them in the first place, and how they impact the performance of your cartridge once that stylus hits the record and creates a frictional force. So the tool that is used to measure these frictional and horizontal forces is the Wally Skater. This is a tool that is designed to measure those forces as a percentage of your vertical tracking force. You'll notice that in the lower beam of the Wally Skater are hash marks. Each hash mark represents 1% of your vertical tracking force. So to determine what your horizontal force measurement is, you will look at the hash mark that the plumb bob is pointing at and measure how many hash marks until you see the one that the yellow line is intersecting. That number of hash marks corresponds to the percentage of horizontal force relative to your vertical tracking force that is being applied. So I highly encourage you to use the Wally Skater as a measuring tool before you align the cantilever with the Wally Tractor or any other protractor for that matter in order to determine that your tone arm doesn't have its own internal horizontal forces pushing that cantilever one way or the other. This condition is a little more common than most people are aware of and is typically caused by the tone arm wires internal to the tone arm that have been twisted too hard or misrouted and are causing a torque force on the arm one way or the other. If this condition exists and it exists significantly enough, what, what it will cause is a significant problem when it comes to time for you to align your cantilever at the null points on the Wally tractor. What will happen if these forces are heavy enough, when the stylus uh, draw lower, is lowered down to the protractor, what will happen? Those horizontal forces will kick in and the cantilever will do this. Now, you're looking at it from the front and you want to correct for it because you're aligning at the null point. So what do you do? You rotate the cartridge to get the cantilever in line with the null point alignment marks. Well, unbeknownst to you, you've just messed up your alignment. So what we want to aim for is having these horizontal forces being no more than about 4 or 5%. Once it gets above about 5%, I've become concerned about that horizontal torque force shifting the alignment of the cantilever when you're aligning at the null point. If your tone arm has an exposed tone arm wire loop on it, many unipivots have this situation, and you do have excessive horizontal forces on your tone arm, you can often alleviate these forces by redressing the loop, either by changing its shape or its position. If, however, you, this is not available to you and there is no way for you to alleviate these horizontal forces, the solution is often simply using the cueing lever to control the landing of the stylus on the null point. In other words, don't let it fully land. Once it fully lands, the horizontal force is free to kick in and mess up the visual alignment of the cantilever. This first test of measuring the horizontal forces that are native to your tone arm is done with the anti-skating mechanism completely removed. And finally, this test can and should be performed on linear tracking tone arms as well. Because of course, if the linear tracking tone arm has a torque force pushing the carriage one way or the other, it can impact the alignment of that cantilever. So for this next test, we're gonna measure static frictional forces, uh, also known as stiction. So the reason why we would wanna measure stiction in your tone arm is to make sure that the condition doesn't exist whereby the stylus, which is following the groove, is having to drag your tone arm along with it. If the stylus is having to work your arm across the record, well, what will happen? Well, the cantilever will be shifted the whole way across the record. When that cantilever is shifted, of course your tracing error is increased. So stiction is measured using the Wally skater by determining how much horizontal force needs to be applied to the tone arm before it starts moving at all. Again, we're looking at the difference between the line that the plumb bob is pointing at and the line that the yellow string intersects. If that exceeds 
about 4% before the toe arm finally comes moving along for the ride, then perhaps we should be looking at what's going on with the arm. Okay, starting with the anti-skating mechanism completely disengaged and the blue line and the yellow line lined up with each other, we start moving the hanger one direction to see how much horizontal force needs to be applied before the arm is coming along for the ride. I'm already at about 5% horizontal force and the arm still is not moving. And I'm at about 8% and the arm still is not moving. Finally, at about 10% horizontal force, this arm is moving. Now I have placed a wedge in the bearing of this tone arm so that it doesn't move freely. So I know to expect this, but I needed to show what this condition looks like so that you can look for it in your own tone arm. So I know that some audiophiles and even some tone arm designers completely disavow anti-skating force. So for this, we'll just have to say that there's a significant difference of a opinion. And I'm gonna give you the reasons why I think that skating force should be a force you need to contend with. So skating force is caused by two main components, the frictional force upon the stylus riding in the groove and something called effective moment arm. I'm gonna place a link in the description of this video for you to be able to download a copy of a PDF presentation of this phenomenon called effective moment arm. But I'd like to show you what skating force does in action. So here's a video of a medium compliance cartridge that is on a record and that record is at once not in motion and then in motion. Watch how the cantilever angle changes significantly between the moving record condition and the non-moving record condition. It is skating force causing this angular change. But of course, skating force doesn't exist until friction exists. And that is why you only see it occur when the record is moving. As you can see, the measured difference in cantilever angle between the non-moving record and the moving record is 2.4 degrees. That is a significant angular change that skating force has caused in this cartridge. And keep in mind that this experiment was not even done at the point in the record where skating force is at its greatest and was done on an 11 inch arm, which has got lower skating force than the more commonly available nine inch arms. Now, if you do not use an anti-skating mechanism during playback, and you have taken the time and energy to align your cantilever perfectly at the null points, then, well, what happens? As soon as the frictional force kicks in, your cantilever, in this case, is out of alignment by 2.4 degrees. This skating force and the resultant change in cantilever angle must be compensated for by an anti-skating force. Now, admittedly, anti-skating force is at best an approximation. Skating force changes depending on the radius that you're playing on the record. It changes depending upon the amplitude of the music in the grooves. But the science on the coefficient of friction and resulting skating forces was done very well decades ago by several scientists and engineers in companies like Shure Brothers and two other establishments. However, we're still unsatisfied with this being the final word. And in fact, we have acquired all of the equipment necessary to do coefficient of friction tests for ourselves. It's just a matter of priorities and is going to fall in line with the queue of other research items that we're working on. When we have those results, we'll share them. But there is a reason to believe that since final formulations have changed and stylus profiles have become more severe and even groove amplitudes have changed a little bit over time, that a slight change in the amount of anti-skating force we apply may be in need of a bit of a change. As always, with Wally Tools customers, if you've got any questions, you reach out to us by email or by phone, and we're here to help. So there it is. Enjoy Analog Forever.